On this week's World of Saltwater Fishing, longtime friend Captain Mark Schmidt and I are west of Key West in the Florida Keys and fishing off the Marquesas. It's a hot bite with groupers. I love the Marquesas. Mutton snapper. Oh, Mark, that's a gorgeous mutton snapper. And King Mack. And there's a nice king from the Marquesas. <laughs> now, this is a Marquesas surprise here. That's beautiful. Don't miss this exciting episode. George Pofferomo's World of Saltwater Fishing. Big fish don't stand a chance. Key West, in the Florida Keys, in December. A perfect weather window. Temperatures are supposed to be up around the low 80s. And I had a great opportunity to trail to the Mark 6 down here and fish with a very close and personal friend of mine, Captain Mark Schmidt. Mark and I go back to the early 80s. So one of the first times that George and I fished together was for a magazine article, and we went down to the Marquesas and caught all kinds of different fish and, and had a great time. I know George loves to go down to the Marquesas. I love to go down to the Marquesas, and the biggest reason I love to go to the Marquesas is because of the variety of different types of, you can fish, of fish you can catch down there. And this was sort of what we like to call a busman's holiday where two fishing pros basically take a couple days off to have fun and what else? Go out and catch fish. Mark, Marquesi Island time again. Uh, the rock piles, um, you fish down there semi-religiously. Give me an example of what you expect us to encounter today. Well, I, when, when the water cools down, the bigger fish move up into the shallow areas and you get mackerel start to move in, uh, kingfish start to move in, uh, sometimes you'll see schools of bonita down there busting the, these little small minnows. And I've been fished down there all year round, but I know that the cooler months can bring a lot of big grouper in the shower too. Absolutely. Always good down there. Yep, yep. All right. Buttons. Let's make that run down to our first rock pile, which in the GPS about 28 miles from here. Sounds good. Go have some fun. Mark and I cruise down into Marquesas around 50 to 52 miles an hour. We made it down here in no time. We started to slow down when we neared some productive numbers. When we got down to the Marquesas, um, I took over the controls and George zoomed in the uh, Simrad machine. So we blew up the bottom and were able to really see in fine detail all the structure that was down there. And we were looking for those rock piles that had pretty much a good amount of relief, but yet had a lot of life in terms of juvenile yellowtail, bait, and even groupers on them. And it didn't take long till the first rock pile really showed exactly what we were looking for. Marquesa. Oh. I ain't even had time to say good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mark. Here we are, Marquesa. How, how much of a history do you and I have to this place here? And every time we get together, it, it's just like two young kids having fun out here, making fun of each other in a very good, respectful way. And this trip was certainly no different. One of the big wait, wait, let me just catch this fish, all right? Yeah, you, you do that. I'll see what it is. Oh. Remember, they're circle hooks. You're supposed to whine. OK, thanks. <laughs> and sometimes when you get on these rock piles and you drop down, be okay. ready. If the big grouper's there, chances are uh -oh. it's going to eat first. If you need help with a net, I've got the net. OK. I'll put this rod in a holder. Let, let me get him off the bottom first. <laughs> all right. I'm going to stand by with you here, buddy. He making a headway or has he got you? Rocked no, up? No, he, he's not rocked up yet, but he's, you know what this might be? Do I? All right. Yep. I got the net here. Let me know when you get him turned your way, bud. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going back got... to catching something. Yeah, do that. Is he hoping over the bottom or, or did he get you? He, no, he, I he, think he's got me. We'll see if I can get him swim out. All right. Well, see, there's a gamble. You know, there's obviously some goliaths on these rock piles. But yet, there's some big gag grouper. So that's the thing. The initial stages, you're not sure whether you get a glass or maybe it's a grouper that holds you up. A you, gag. This fit, you you want to go with a lighter, lighter tackle if you can. But if, if you get a, a goliath on lighter tackle, you're, you know, your chances of getting them are not great. That's funny. 
you were getting hit with the ballyhoo chunks. Almost every time you're throwing back, you're getting hit. And I put on a bonita chunk, which is normally deadly, and then they had the first half. Sometimes it, they... It, right. We talked about this. Right. They key on certain things. I mean, you've been out here, and we've had this discussion where you had live baits, and they wouldn't eat a live bait. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You making headway? Yeah. I don't know that this is a Goliath. I'm telling you, there's enough big grouper here that could do the same thing initially until you get going with them, you know? One thing I like to do, George, is short stroke these guys, and you got to cut the spool sometimes. And, you know, it's just a matter of knowing when to let I go. See color. That's a nice fish. It is. It's a nice big red grouper. Oh, my. Come on. I love the Marquesas. I do too. It's our among our favorite spots ever. He had me in the rocks three times and acted like a Goliath. Look how scuffed up that leader is. It is bow. Look at that. That's the re-rig on and that. And look, look at look at how scuffed up that fish is. Man. Well, he's gonna pay for it. We'll okay. eat him tonight. William. Open season, we're all legal. Yep. Okay. I was gonna ask you what size shoes you wear, but you heard that joke before, right? <laughs> I'll go over and open up the fish box. <laughs> George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing, proudly brought to you by ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. Rapala, your best shot at a world record. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Papa's Pilar, a rum inspired by possibly the world's greatest adventurer. Captain Mark Schmidt and I are in the midst of a solid fish bite some 25 miles west of Key West in the Florida Keys. We're off the Marquesas. Oh. Tell me if you need a net. I know it's okay, I think I get it. That's a you different sure? bite compared to a red. More like a red though. It is a red. Is that, that, that might be a keeper if you want to measure him. You got him or you want me to help you? I get him. Right there. Hey, but they think you like spit up your thin fish. Though. Yes. Yeah, that was the bait we used before. It was right. a thin fish, so you got that. that so that's, that's probably the one you just lost. It is, and I got him back. You have the last lap. And there you have it. You're going to get a better angle on him. What do you think, there, Mark? He's right at it. I mean, he's right at it. You know, the other thing that happens is that these things will shrink. So yeah, if I you've know. got a 20 inch grouper, it right, may not be 20 them. inches. Exactly. So. We're going to let him go anyhow. That's cool. And right back down. Hey, and I tell you, here we are, very beginning of December. See how cold that water's getting? It's getting very cold. What the heck? Ain't that Kobe on Could be. Oh, but missed a bump here too. How about a, maybe a big king? Uh, could be very oh, well. Would that be great? Slow it up. So I was reeling up to check my bait when I really got slammed. And the fish made a blistering runoff. George, it's, it's having its way with me, I can tell you that. We were trying to debate what it was, a barracuda, a shark, possibly a kingfish. That fish, you know, took me all around the boat. And I was really concerned because I had a 40 pound fluoro leader, but the circle hook did the trick, hooked the fish right in the corner of the mouth. I've seen a lot of fast pickups, but the speed in which this one took off out here was mind blowing. I mean, yeah, yeah, sharks, but seriously, you ever see a shark move that fast? Well, that That's pretty, more kingish. Yes. Yeah. Hope that circle hook holds its place there, huh? You're working hard to jinx you me. Want me right? I know, you want to get the gaff ready? <laughs> Anytime you hang a chum bag behind your boat, fishing these rock piles, um, you, you do stand at risk of bringing in sharks and some unwanted you know, trash fish. But yet, you also have the opportunity of bringing in mackerel or especially kingfish. I mean, it's kingfish. There he is. You know, I wonder if that's what that shoals of fish. It could have been. They, they could have been the big kings chasing the Spanish to eat them is what it is. Take your time, bud. Looking good, my friend. And, and there's a, a king from the Marquesas. <laughs> Don't let him beat you up too bad. <laughs> Get in this boat, Chief. Don't fall. The boat's been waxed. It's got that star bright shine on it. I don't want to look. The biggest catch to be Mark Schmidt, oh. the noted Key West guide. All right. Come on. Now, this is a Marquesas surprise here. That's beautiful. Off the bottom with a grouper rod and hit the circle hook. The no, eyes on the no outside. No steel. No steel. Take skill. It. Take skill to do that. I can't argue with you. You got it. <laughs> but check out that leader. It's like a little nick where he, he sort of touched it a little yeah. bit. 
in the fray. That's awesome. All right, glad to see you got that's your horseshoe awesome. in the upright position. All right, that's awesome. Watch his teeth, once you unhook okay. him. And All right, I'm gonna grab these pliers, Go George. for it. And Off the bottom of the bottom rod, and we were talking that the machine was turning red with the Spanish mackerel going through. And those big kings eat those Spanish. Yes, they do. This is what this guy was doing. There you go, perfect hook job, I may say so myself. Well, you know what, you, 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 you definitely, Said you're a great angler, you got the fish. Definitely a great hook job. You definitely proved that. Show me how well you open up that fish box. I knew with. that was coming. I've been fishing with you too long. <laughs> Same old corny jokes, they don't change. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing proudly brought to you by Mako. You'll find them where the fish are. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine, go boldly. Simrad and the revolutionary new Halo Radar. Go with Simrad and go with confidence. Attractions in Key West. That's a very long list because there are absolutely no shortages of things to do in Key West. You can stay busy for as long as you want. Uh, we did this show in December and I had the opportunity to take a walk through a new tourist attraction. It's a new Papa's Pilar rum distillery in Old Town Key West off Simonton Street. And the tourists have an opportunity to see from the very beginning how they distill their rum. And the reason they wanted to put their distillery here, Papa's Pilar, X amount of profits from their rum go to the Hemingway Foundation. They wanted to bring their distillery to Key West to make it a major tourist attraction, then also to tie into the roots of Ernest Hemingway himself. Case in point, the other big tourist attraction here, the Hemingway House. This is a facility where back in the day, Hemingway spent a lot of his time doing his writing. And being a fishing person, just the vast opportunities of catching fish around Key West must have been off the charts, especially back then. Mallory Square, a huge anchor. You have to take in Mallory Square at least once uh, on an evening right when the sun is setting. All kinds of crazy annex down here are being showcased. Um, it's just a big tourist gathering spot and you just have to get involved and just see exactly what goes on down here. And pretty much, you could come out here one night, come back the second night or third night and things sort of change. It's really not the same exact show that you see night after night. When we were in town doing the shoot, we stayed at the Ibis Bay Beach Resort. What's unique about this facility is it retains the old style Key West feel, but with 21st century amenities. All the rooms have flat screen HD TVs, hammocks, they have their own 106 foot long well-groomed beach. It's a very comfortable facility that you really get a local feel of the area. And the one thing that I was very thoroughly impressed with on the property is the restaurant, the Stone Crab Restaurant. Uh, one night we decided to have the Florida lobster. It was in season. They have pens based on the size of the Florida lobsters you want to eat. They'll go in, take the live Florida lobster out, bring it back to the kitchen. Probably 20, 25 minutes later, it's served right on your table. Talk about fresh. And I will tell you this, I will take that restaurant and put it up against some of Key West's finest, and this will rate right there. So, Ibis Bay Beach Resort, without a doubt, a beautiful facility, a relaxing one to stay at, and their mainstay restaurant, the Stone Crab, I'm telling you, that place is remarkable. Got our mutton here, this is the way it's fighting. And I've always said that on these rock piles out here, the prize catch, at least in my opinion, is the mutton snapper. Oh, nice mutton too. I, I, just the way it's by fighting, I'm telling you, it's gotta be a beauty. Staying down a ways, Mark. I'm looking at him, look at him down there. Here she comes, beautiful mutton. And these muttons, they're a very peculiar fish in that they could just feed with reckless abandonment and just engulf a bait and pull that rod tip down and the game is on. But a lot of cases when they're just finicky or not certain, they'll come over to a bait, push it around a little bit, take a peck at it, back off, it was almost feeling like those yellowtails, the small yellowtails were picking away at your bait. It wasn't an overly aggressive strike at all, by any stretch of the imagination. What are you guessing I'm, on him, Mark? I'm sure he's 16. Drop him down on the deck. 
So when you're going down the Marquesas, you really need to know what the re current regulations are, and the best way to find out is stop in your local tackle shop or go to the FWC website. Make sure you're careful and measure those fish because it's a, it'll ruin your day if you get stopped and have to pay a fine because you don't know what the size limits are. Georgia's Tackle Locker. During the excitement that comes with leading the fish alongside the boat, or into a landing net, <laughs> keeping calm enough to quickly and accurately measure a fish can be a big challenge. This is where measuring tape affixed to your boat comes in handy. When you want to make sure if a fish is of legal length for keeping, or measure up one for mounting, lay the fish on the tape and measure from the tip of its snout to either, based on the law, the fork of its tail or the end of its tail after it has been compressed or scrunched together. For billfish, sharks, tarpon, and other large game fish, which require keeping in the water, lead the fish alongside the boat to where its tail is even with your transom. Then with a pencil, or if the boat is lettered, visualize where the bill or snout of the fish lines up and mark it. You can later acquire these measurements with a tape roll. That's all King Sailfish mounts will need to produce a replica mount of your very special catch. Mercury Performance Stats, Key West, Florida Keys. Seas, two to three feet. Power, triple 350 horsepower Mercury Verado outboards. Total miles traveled, 72. Speed, 51 miles per hour. Total fuel burned, 70 gallons. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing, proudly brought to you by Suffix, always use the best line. Pen, let the battle begin. Starbright, professional grade boat care products. King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. We're back over the rock piles off the Marquesas, some 25 miles west of Key West in the Florida Keys. I'm fishing with longtime friend, Captain Mark Schmidt. I can, I can, I can listen to the sound, I know it's one. Good, if you need a net, I'm here, buddy. Okay. Oh, Mark, that's a gorgeous mutton snapper. Oh, man, Mark. Whew. Did you get this figured out or did you get it figured out? I guess we got it figured out. <laughs> that's a great fish. That's a nice fish. You know, I'll uh, take, take those any every day, right? I always said this every time I'm out here. There's so many fish you can get into. Red grouper, gags, there's yellowtail, there's mangrove snappers. And to me, the ultimate Marquesi rock pile prize is the mutton snapper. I always say that. You may have a different opinion. I, no, I, I agree <laughs> with you. I mean, I love a mutton snapper. They eat well, they fight well. They're great fish, you know, I, I love, yeah. I mean, I, I love mutton snapper. Oh, oh, whoa! <laughs> it's weird, whatever you got. Probably a mutton came up and ate that thing. I Listen, I wouldn't doubt that a bit. I mean, look at the muttons we have around here. Oh, he's kind of sitting near the surface. Let's have a look at that. Let's see if we at least see any kind of color to get an idea. See, now I don't think he's a mutton now because he's not diving for the bottom. No, he seems like he's going a little too fast for a cuda. Yeah, he still has some fight. That's that, that's another king or a span. That's a I king. Think that's a king. That's yeah. another king. Uh -huh. I don't think it's as big as the other one, but it's not a bad king. It's not, no, it's not bad. You wear them out. You just do me a favor and you, you, you make them nice and easy. So I'm, we hey, I'm, them. I'm working on wearing them out. Got a lot of nice runs out of the fish, worked him over to the boat. We decided this one we were going to release. We already had one in the box that we were going to smoke. So George got his gloves on, tailed the fish. I got the hook out of the kingfish and we admired him for a minute, sent him on his way and he swam off no problem. Let me, let me get behind you. Let me get behind you. Get this line out of the way. And the only bad thing about this rock pile that we were on is that we were hitting it towards the latter part of the day. And here we were again, the days aren't as long. We're here in December, days are shorter, and we can see that sun just starting to get lower and lower and lower to the horizon. So what are George and I gonna do next? But we're always talking about where we're gonna go and what we're gonna do next but I always know it's gonna be a special day on the water and looking forward to fishing with George again, wherever it may be.
But what a good time, man. We wore out the red grouper. We had muttons. We had kingfish in the mix. It was just the perfect Marchese day and very representative of what happens out here. Got that Mark 6 cranked up about 55 miles an hour and got all the way back to City Marina before that sun crept over the horizon. So we got back to the dock, tied up, and uh, had to face what every boater has to face after a day of fishing, which is cleaning up. So because George is such a good friend, I decided to hang around, but he did offer me an adult beverage if I would hang around. And once the boat was tied up safely and we were done completely washing the Mark VI, it was time to celebrate a productive day off the Marquesas is what we like to refer to as the Papa's Pilar moment. Just had a um, Papa's Pilar rum, talked about good old times and uh, our day and reminisced it. It was just one of those perfect deals that uh, you get to share with a very good friend and I had the opportunity to do so that evening with uh, Buddy Marchman. For more detailed information on saltwater fishing, including how-to videos and features, visit my website, georgepovaromo.com. Also, to keep on top of my fishing excursions, visit me at Facebook. That's facebook.com forward slash george.povaromo. And I'm also on Instagram at georgepovaromo. We'll see you there.